room. It's a very special day for all of us and for me as well. Uh, thank you, Katerina. Thank you, Katerina Frenzos, and congratulations once again. Um, it's uh, it's so nice to see people who make who make things happen. First of all, because all this is happening because of people's um, dreams and and believing in in the past and the present and the future. So, um, let me introduce you to Maria Lemos, who is the founder um, of Rainbow Wave. It's a, a very, very important big showroom, wholesale showroom. She represents a lot of different brands, including Greek ones, but also brands from Mexico, from Australia, from Albania. Um, and we will have an interesting talk about how uh, branding and heritage becomes a business, or how heritage becomes really a business. Uh, next to her is Marius Schwab, who is a Greek-Austrian designer, uh, who is based in London. And next to him is uh, Bolina Ellis, an archaeologist as well as a painter. And uh, as of recently, well, a few years ago, she is a jewelry designer. And so we will explore how our heritage can become creativity, can become things that we like, things that we buy, and you know how to promote them worldwide. So Maria, what could I ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Thank okay. you. Um, this is on, but yeah. anyway, thank you. Can you hear me? Um, Just a second. Working. Working. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm Greek, um, a little bit Cretan through my maternal grandmother, um, raised in Greece, but um, also living in London. I studied classics and French literature in Oxford, so I've got a, a past that's linked to the ancient world, um, and I have worked in fashion for the last 20 years, um, through various guises, public relations to start off with. Um, and um, I worked with amazing people like John Galliano and Clements Ribeiro and eventually set up my own business which is an agency and we represent people as you said from all over the world um, some Greeks ancient Greek sandals being one of them an incredible success story of the sandal brand that started seven years ago which is now sold in uh, 300 stores around the world uh, just started their own retail, two very young people with different backgrounds who created an incredibly successful business in footwear, um, and I'm quite involved in that. Um, we also represent Greek jewelers, um, we have worked with Marius, so we've worked with fashion designers from Greece, um, and um, yeah, what we do is we promote beautiful product um, worldwide. Thank you very much, Maria. Marius, yes, tell us hello. a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up in Athens till I was 15. Um, my mom is Greek. She, um, her background is, her dad is from Crete, from Mohos in um, near Lassithi, on, on mountain Lassithi, actually. Um, and my dad is from Austria, so, I pursued my dream to become a fashion um, designer from quite an early age. I started going um, in, um, actually in a girls college, I was the first boy to enter this college that was predominantly for uh, craftsmanship and tailoring, so, um, and after that I embarked to kind of do my BA course, which I did in Berlin. And soon after an MA at in London at St. Martin's College. And I accidentally kind of started working on my own brand because uh, um, I started working for various different small brands and labels and suddenly I got slightly noticed and that kind of was the birth of uh, my Marish uh, label. Um, I had always like a passion about Greek heritage, obviously, and my Greek heritage, but not only in the classical way, but also, you know, the mythology, all the aspects that kind of also maybe derive from Knossos, the serpent goddess, as was mentioned quite a few times, 
and you know, like here I am um, talking to you about Obes. Um, I'll pass the microphone. It's Paulina Starmer. Give us a second so we make sure we have her images as well. Okay. Like microphones anyway. okay, off you go. I'll do my best. Anyways, I'm uh, in my first life, uh, as I used to say, I was an archaeologist. I have uh, studied archaeology and history of art in the University of Heidelberg and did my PhD on a Cretan theme. Uh, my other passion was painting, that's true. So all that uh, led me uh, to my real passion, which is jewelry. So as uh, I feel that everybody is meant to do something in this world, and uh, for me it was the jewel. I remember Sofia Kokosalaki in the last event of uh, um, Branding Heritage. She said that there is an invisible thread that connected her to her Cretan heritage. So having myself uh, <coughs> spent all the summers since I was 10 years old with my renowned archaeologist uh, uh, aunts and uncle John Sekelar Sekelarak, and Dev Sakna Sekelaraki, which really was an amazing experience because I spent one month every summer excavating in Minoan palaces. So actually even sleeping on a Minoan palace because this house of excavation was only me. <laughs> you know that in Alhanis. So, uh, so I wanted to say that unconsciously, I feel also that this thread is connecting my, my known past to, uh, to my destination. So uh, it is very important in my work to try to tra transfer uh, my experiences and my education with strong lines into modern designs so that people can feel those uh, symbolisms. And I feel it's uh, of a major ex uh, importance, especially nowadays, that we stay connected to our roots. Thank you, Bovina. I'll be back in a minute with you. Actually, I want to ask you, Paulina, now, because we have the, the image here, the head of the Minotaur. Yeah. And right underneath, we have pieces from your most recent collection. Which not is Adros. The Minotadros. The Minotadros. So, I know it must be very difficult to explain, to tell us in words, but could you give us an idea of how a statue or the heads of the Minotadros becomes... Yeah. A design and eventually a jewel, a piece of jewelry. Um, I feel that uh, that's something uh, that works also somehow unconsciously, because uh, through all those uh, this experience and uh, my background, um, sometimes I see a piece of art or I think of something like the myth of uh, Notavros, and. Uh, all this imagination spawns a new collection. So talking about Minotavros, which is a Minoan thing, um, actually Minotavros uh, is the name of the collection because uh, I dedicate the name to the myth. But uh, what I depict is not the Minotavros, is the symbols of the consecration horns, which is a symbol of rebirth, and uh, of Minota, of the Taurus, which is a symbol of power in the Minoan uh, culture, to very strong. Uh, I mean, they were even identifying uh, buildings when you found consecration stones as religious places uh, because of uh, this uh, evidence. So um, I wanted to depict the result when the soils killed the Minotavros with the support of uh, Ariadne through love, she gave him the mythos, the thread th th of bow, in order to find his way out, because we do the job on our own, but we need help in this uh, world, in order to achieve our goals and to go out uh, to the light. So the symbolism uh, depicted here is uh, the rebirth and the power that felt Thesaurus that all of us have to to feel and need to do uh, after we achieve our goals. Yeah. Thank you. 
Vancouver. It's a very good effort. It's difficult to talk about your work in that way. Marius, um, back in 2006, uh, we, we, we spoke for an interview, and I remember you said that your Austrian heritage probably comes through in the fact that you're very focused. Um, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your Greek heritage. Perhaps it's the same thing, but also if you could tell us a little bit about how your Greek heritage might try and come into your work. Well, first of all, like both cultures, I think, affect each other in the same um, way. Craftsmanship is a big part of both cultures. And I think growing up um, with interesting characters in my family, the Greek women, uh, were always a very um, dominant inspiration in the way that I work and I think the depiction of uh, these strong sort of characters are in many ways depicted also in the incredible uh, artworks that you might find in the frescoes but also the you know the civilization that was so much admiring. Do you encourage the, the designers you work with, do you encourage certain designers uh, to go back to their roots, to their background, to their heritage? Is it something no. you might do? You don't do that. You don't do that. Um, I think everyone can be inspired by different things. I think our job is to pick the people who are inspired by real storytelling, because that is more authentic and they're better designers. Um, but you have to leave a designer free. I mean, our job is to guide them in other um, ways which are how to create a brand. So the inspiration is raw and loose, and then I suppose my job is to actually help them channel that into a product that is viable in our modern world. But you can't, you can't create you, we're not, you know, my, I'm not a designer. I'm there to support designers. Um, and I think if we pick designers who are true and good, um, what we have to do is explain to them what the world needs, and that is help them brand. So I think the branding element of branding heritage is important. Um, so when we started working with ancient Greek sandals, for example, the name, I remember thinking the name was strange you know, ancient Greek sandals, I thought, this is not very commercial. Um, and ancient in those, it, that was seven years ago, was not popular. Um, but they created a fully modern product with an ancient name to it. The first collection was inspired by Minoan footwear. Very closely, and um, the wing, which is a symbol of the brand, um, was is still the branding of this label but they took the wing and they gave it a new life and for me people who really feel the heritage need to give new life to the old we need to move forward the past is there as a springboard but what we need to do as Greeks is create a new reality how we translate the old is different to each person and it doesn't have to be Obvious. It doesn't. Ha it can be so different. Every individual understands ancient in a different way. And actually, I have to say, you know, what was interesting about today is Minoan culture is is very feels very modern in a way. You can apply it in many many ways. You can be inspired by the feminine ideal. You can be inspired by. Knossos, um, I mean, I thought the Fortuny reference was incredible. So you can see it travel through the ages in many different ways. If you literally copy it, you're not creating. So I think creating branding heritage is taking the old and readapting it to suit our modern world. And how do you feel that international designers interpret something like Greek antiquity, for instance? We've seen goddess dresses. We've seen a lot of things which might sort of fall into that category of Greek inspired. Is it is it something very very different because they do it in a very different way? As it's not, it's not. Yeah, I, I think 
you know, Greece continues to inspire on a, on a daily basis. And there's so many designers that have been inspired by Greece. And as Mario said, some of it is subconscious. You know, uh, pleating, draping, that's all, you know, very Greek. But, but uh, Miyako can pleat, and he's Japanese, you know. Um, so you can, you can take references and, and completely transform them. That's being creative. Thank you. Marius, when you look at this sandal, which is uh, it's a very good example of branding heritage, I, I think, which was also translated, as you said, Marie, into a big global commercial success. I wonder, what, if you think of the past and all the things you know about it, if going back to your roots might also trigger ideas about craftsmanship and how things were done in the old ways. Because you did mention craftsmanship before. Yeah. I think more than ever nowadays, like I think um, young designers also observing them and observing fashion industry at the moment being, um, you know, going through a major change is how we return back to basics and also involve ourselves with maybe heritage in terms of how we find sustainable ways of creating certain things. Uh, the Minoans were extremely. Um, passionate about color and the way in which they kind of applied color on their artworks, but also the, the resources that they used are now quite interesting in, in a way that we can basically look at it from a natural perspective and just apply them in, in a way that works for in, in our systems. I think um, this kind of as, uh, admiration of nature is something that is very beautiful in, in the art. And I think more than ever, it's something that uh, we as creators need to embrace more. Going back to nature and just apply certain things that are um, not just beautiful, but also soulful and... <coughs> Would you like to add something to that? Yeah, I, I think the other thing is um, with Kingsford when um, Sarah and Harriet talked about Sophia, you can see, to go to, back to what you asked me before, the references were wholly Greek. The result was completely modern. So to someone who's not Greek and who doesn't know the references, it's still a beautiful, incredible product. I think that is what matters more than anything. Um, and I think craft is important, and I think in Greece we're in danger of losing craft. So going back to craft, um, that's part of the heritage. Um, so understanding what Greek craft is and helping support that and teaching children at school to do, to make things with their hands and to, to look at what's around them, that will make them creative. So I think, you know, how we brand heritage, it's first of all, yes, understanding our past, but it's also learning their techniques. And I think, you know, the family values that we have in Greece, the, you know, grandmothers who have time on their hands, hopefully, and can teach children. They are living teachers of the past. So I think that's just as strong, in a way, of creating this branding heritage. If I think of what my Greek past, I've learned it through my grandparents and my family and summers of repeat, 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 um, and being acquainted with everything around us. So, um, and I think you, you discover your heritage later on in life. You know, you become, your heritage becomes more important to you later on in life. So, I think as Greeks, we have an immense responsibility to preserve the craft in our past. But we'll make it relevant to the future. I really need yeah. to insist on that. Because there's too much of it <coughs> kind of just looking back at the past. Yeah, it's using also is using also modern sort of identities to kind of like techniques to embrace this uh, craft. And I totally couldn't agree more with Maria like this education of like transferring all this heritage into you youth and finding a different language to interpret is super vital, really, really important, especially when 
Greece has so many different aspects to offer in terms of craftsmanship. The storytelling of our heritage needs to become more modern. In the same way that we need to embrace the family and we need to embrace our older ways of storytelling, we need to understand the younger audience. That is our future. So, you know, having been through Greek education, we need to make history come alive. I want to add, uh, maybe finalize and say that uh, to me it's very important what Maria uh, Lemus said before, that uh, it's important, of course, to communicate with the modern and the young people in a way that they understand our heritage, but make, because the Greeks, or people maybe, we have an egoism, so we don't teach the younger people. So I would really love to see more support to bring all the old technicians who know the best techniques to educate those people, because I really believe it's a, it's an era of so much speed and um, fakeness, let's say, uh, that uh, there will come back time that the luxury will be to gain time for yourself and create with all techniques, maybe in a traditional workshop, something modern. But people need to learn those techniques. So that's what my that's dream will be. That's what you say. So yeah. I totally agree. We need to support that. Bring those people who know uh, to teach the young people. Yeah. So just to end on that, I wasn't saying we need a Greek fashion week. Definitely not. But if we could have Greek production, which has disappeared, it, the same goes for Britain. If we could be making cotton in Greece, which we had, if we could be knitting in Greece, if we could be embroidering, if we have Greek products, I think in our current world, I think that is sustainable. I think that is good for community. And I think that educates children. So I, I don't, we don't need fashion weeks, but we need to be making things in Greece. Mm -hmm. And it's great that we're making jewelry, but we could be making other things as well. Because in Greece, and tourism is, in a way, a double-edged sword, um, it's great because it brings revenue in, but on the other hand, the island I go to every summer, everybody wants to open a bar rather than be making anything because coffee is cheap and more profitable. So if we want to preserve our heritage, we need to be making sure that we don't lose that heritage pretty quickly, actually. Thank you.